farmers spend a lot of money on different activities during the growing season. They need to buy fertilizers, seeds, weedy sites, pay for tractor services, and transportation of harvested produce, amongst other expenses. Surprisingly, however, the most expensive cost in farming is not considered to be any of these, but labor. Since the majority of our farmers are small-scale farmers who do not practice mechanized farming, farm activities such as planting, weeding, fertilizer application, and harvesting are all done manually. Due to the labor-intensive nature of these activities, farmers usually engage their children, spouses, neighbors, and other family members in carrying them out. On big farms, most of this work is either done by machines, which are much faster and efficient, or by hired farm laborers who are paid according to the amount of work they do. Imagine your farming was like that, and you had to pay yourself and your family members for all the days spent working on the farm. That will be your total cost of labor for one season. In this message, we will learn about how to properly plan the time spent on the farm and how to work with people who you engage on your farm in order to be more productive and efficient. This is called labor management. The first step in proper labor management is to consider your labor resources when determining your scale of production or farm size. At the start of the season, when you are deciding how many acres of your groundnut, cowpea or soya to cultivate, consider the number of people in your household who can help you to cultivate that size of land and whether or not you can afford to hire the extra labor to make up the difference. The rule is simple. The bigger your farm, the more labor you will need to cultivate it. In modern farming, it is not really about how big your farm is, but rather how well you cultivate the little you have. That is why it is possible that a farmer who cultivates only three acres can harvest the same as another farmer who cultivates five. If you cannot afford hired labor, don't cultivate a big field. Only cultivate the size of land that you and your family can cater for very well. Otherwise, you will be overburdened and cannot provide the care your farm needs to do well. Whether you are hiring labor or working with your family on your farm, you should always remember to assign roles. For example, if you have three people helping you on your farm with harvesting, you can split the tasks. You and the next eldest person can be responsible for breaking the cobs of the maize plant and piling them in small heaps on the field. The same can be done for cowpea, groundnut, and soya. The remaining two can be tasked with collecting these small piles from the main field and gathering them into heaps at the side of the field or under a shade. If you do this, work will be more efficient. In assigning targets, please consider the ability of the individual and always remember to be fair. For example, on a weeding day, you can assign a portion to an individual. If you, an adult, are responsible for 10 rows, your son can be assigned to about 4 or 5 rows. This way, you are able to tell who completed their task at the end of the day. A clear target also serves as motivation to inspire hard work. Before you hire people to work on your farm, you should be clear on the task and the number of people you will need. You can then talk to other farmers and have them recommend to you the best laborers around. Three hardworking laborers could weed a field in the same amount of time it would take five average laborers. Once you know the hardest working laborers in your community, maintain a good working relationship with them. This ensures that anytime you call on them to work on your farm, they will respond and be committed to getting the work done well and on time. They may even work for you on credit if you do not have money readily available to pay them. You do not need to be on the farm throughout the day. Farm work is best done in the morning and early evening after the sun has gone down. It is healthier and you will spend less energy to do the same amount of work. 
Remember, do not take your kids to the farm when they are supposed to be in school. You can take them to the farm on weekends or after school when they return home. If you are a pregnant woman, you should have a reduced workload for good health. Remember that if labor is properly planned and managed, you and your family can cultivate multiple fields with the same amount of time and resources. You could even engage in other money-making activities with the spare time. Thank you.